Hey guys, how is everyone doing? We are going to get started here in just a couple of minutes, but I wanted to hop on early and make sure everyone can hear me and everyone can see me. And I also wanted to give you guys the opportunity before I start tonight's uh, webinar and we, we kind of delve into tonight's topic, I wanted to give everybody an opportunity to type in any questions like answered right away. I think this might be a good way to start these broadcasts would be to give just a couple of minutes to ask any questions and we can kind of chat about anything that's come up for you this week before we dive right in. Uh, because once we do dive in, I'm going to ask that you save your questions until the end. I do have uh, a little PowerPoint presentation for you guys tonight just to keep things a little bit easier. And you'll notice I am in a different location tonight because I know uh, last week's broadcast, we got cut off a few times, and I am working on getting that into an audio for you guys. That'll be finished uh, in the next couple of days. So the parts that were really choppy, I am redoing, and I'll have them in an audio so that you can listen to it, because the part that got cut off was actually a really important piece. So if you were thinking that it was your internet connection, I'm pretty sure that it was mine because my replay is also not great. So I can see you guys hopping on. That's so great. Could you please someone type in the chat box and let me know if you can hear me okay And this week before we um, dive in. I'm going to um, cut this part out of the replay, but I thought we'd just take a couple of minutes and sort of get acclimated before we dive into tonight's topic, which is actually a pretty fun one. And it's going to be a little break. You can hear me, great, perfect. Hey Kelly, nice to see you. I see Olivia's here. Um, I can see, I guess about half of us are on live tonight, so that's awesome. It's a little choppy for Karen, sorry to hear that. Is anyone else finding the reception not great or um, is everybody feeling like it's pretty good? Um, I have full bars, so I'm hoping that this location change makes a bit of a difference. But uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on. I don't know why my internet, maybe it's this platform. Maybe this webinar is on air is not the best platform and I might have to rethink that for the future. Um, but it is what it is for now. So I'm going to give you guys just one more minute. If you have last week or if anything came up for you, if you had any big aha moments or light bulb moments or anything like that, uh, type those in. I'd love to hear how it's been going. So we, we first talked about priorities and all that. And then last week we started thinking about setting big goals. So I want to know how you guys did with those goal lists. You should have done a list of 10. Um, and I would love to know how you made out. If you could come up with 10, kind of how you felt about that, and yeah, type those in the chat. I'll give you another minute and then we'll get started. I'm really, really thirsty tonight, so you'll have to bear with me as I drink my water and also present to you. All right, it doesn't look like anybody has any pressing questions they want to talk about, so perhaps we will just jump right in. I'm actually going to... Um, share my screen with you guys so you can see um, this little presentation. Um, they're really just reminders for me as we go along. Olivia's saying I can't hear or see you. Darn it. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it's me or if it's, and some people are saying it's fine. Other people are saying they can't. Uh, seems like this is going to be how it goes every week, which I know is super annoying. Um, I'm not sure what the solution is. I think maybe just recorded vis videos or a different platform. Um, yeah, I don't know. I know it really sucks, guys. I'm really sorry about that. I thought this would work much better. Um, but it's what we're working with right now. So we'll have to continue this way. And hopefully, I don't know, hopefully you can watch the replay. And maybe in the future, I'll have to just record these videos and put them up, which I know is not as cool. Eventually, I'm going to have the capability within Facebook to go live with you guys and um, 
that should work a bit better. But Facebook hasn't rolled out that platform yet inside groups. It's only for some people and I don't have it yet. So the way the way I was doing live Facebook for the 30 day wellness challenge, I will eventually be able to do inside a private group. But right now I can't, that's actually what I wanted to do for this. I thought they would have rolled it out by now, but they didn't. So I can't do that yet. So I'm just gonna go with the presentation and hope that you guys can see and hear this. And then if the replay is choppy, like it was last week, only half of it was choppy and half of it wasn't. So I will retake it and do a video for you guys um, after the fact, if this doesn't work out. But for now, we're gonna get started. So I'm going to share my screen with you all. Okay. So you should be able to see my screen right now and it should say Bold Life Academy Week 3 Vital Practice. And this is going to be our agenda for tonight. So we're going to talk about reclaiming your morning, which we've already talked about in the past. We're going to go over the wellness guide, which is actually, I don't know if you You'll be disappointed or excited to find out that it is extremely simple. It's not as difficult as you may be thinking. We are going to try and figure out what your fitness style is and what your eating style should be, which is different for everybody. And then we're going to talk about um, how to figure out a non-negotiable fitness plan that doesn't feel like a pain in the butt. That's actually something you enjoy doing. So I'm just going to pop back over to our screen here and make sure that you guys can see this. Um, can somebody type in the chat and let me know that you can see my slides before I carry on here? I know this is such a pain in the butt with all the technical issues. Hey, Cindy, can you let me know what you see on your screen? Does it say decide? Can you see my slides? Okay, good. Okay, perfect. Okay, so the first part of this whole thing, so today we're gonna talk about uh, your health, your health and your fitness and your body and food and all of that stuff. So I kind of alluded to this last week, but this week you get a little bit of a brain break. So we've done a lot of deep digging over the last couple of weeks, setting priorities, you know, asking yourself some tough questions, uh, may maybe making some tough decisions. And, and today we're going to sort of take a break from all that and we're gonna focus on your health because as you know, it is a huge part of living a balanced life and being successful and you have complete control over your, you know, your health. But a lot of us, and I, I group myself into that category as well, struggle to sort of find that balance and figure it out. And um, I think the goal for all of us is to create a lifestyle around health and fitness and wellness that feels easy. Like all of us are aiming for, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think all of us are aiming for something that doesn't feel like a full-time struggle. So that's what we're really going to talk about. Oh good, Olivia, I'm so glad. That's what we're gonna talk about tonight is your health and some vital practices and really how simple it is. And I know it is simple in theory and not always simple in execution, but I hope that the things we talk about tonight are going to sort of help you on this path. If you were expecting me to give you a very specific uh, meal plan and fitness plan, I'm not gonna do that. And the reason I'm not gonna do that is because it's different for everybody. I don't think any one person is just like another person. Therefore, I don't think any one program is perfect for every single person out there. I think it's really important to find what works for you and your body and the things that you enjoy and then stick to those because the truth is if the goal is to get healthy and relatively fit and relatively lean and to feel great in your clothes and to look great and have loads of energy and all of that stuff it's a really simple process it's a really simple process and every program out there works and if your goal is weight loss and i say that i'm going to use that as an example um a number of times tonight because i know several of you um actually i would think about 75 percent of you have some health goals that that um, include weight loss so we're going to talk a bit about that but the truth is 
most programs work. If you follow a program, they work. Are they all healthy? Absolutely not. And we're going to kind of talk about the practices I think that everybody should be incorporating into their, into whatever program they choose to follow and why. Uh, but the first step is really making a decision and it's that simple. And I know that is not a sexy thing to say. I know it's not super exciting and it's not some big light bulb moment. However, it's the truth. You have to make a decision, a non-negotiable decision, decision rather, to succeed at your health, to respect your body and do the things that are necessary to get you to your health goals. It's about making a decision to take pride in your health and in your abilities. And I added this last one because I think a lot of us will be able to relate to this. And let me know. Um, I, have a, I have you guys up so that I can see the chat. So let me know if you relate to this. I think a huge part of it is making the decision to be free from and fill in the blank for you. So for a lot of people, it's being free from feeling self-conscious in public. It's being free from pulling on your clothes or not, or trying on 10,000 different outfits in the morning because you can't find one that fits right, or being free from worrying about your health and your health status and the things that might happen to you if you don't get your health under control. So for me, and I think for a lot of people, um, the health and fitness thing goes far beyond just looking great and, and goes much deeper into being free from whatever that underlying thing is. So Jackie says, shame. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It gets being free from, I mean, we've on most of us have been there being free from embarrassment, being free from worrying so much about your appearance that you can't enjoy the things in your life, that it takes away from other experiences, that it doesn't allow you to live your life fully because you're so worried about how you feel or how you look or, or how your body performs or how your health performs and all of those things. That is really, um, it starts with a decision. It starts with a decision about enough is enough and we're not going to do that anymore. And it's that simple. So that's what that very first part is. So we're going to talk first about reclaiming your morning. And I've talked to you guys about this um, many times before. I need another drink of water. Just one moment. So in the 30 day wellness challenge, I chatted with you guys at length about habits of highly successful people and the things that they have in common and one of those things, and I know not everybody loves to hear this because a lot of people are like, oh, I don't like to get up in the mornings. Like I need my sleep. I want to sleep in. I'm not a morning person and all of that. And, and whether that's true or not true, the fact remains that the people who are, and this is as a rule, of course, there are always exceptions, but mostly the people who are very successful, not just in life, but also when it comes to their health, have a morning ritual. And that usually includes exercising in the morning. And it always includes doing things that set your day up for success. So this is going to sort of be a review from something that we talked about in the 30 day wellness challenge. But this is the first thing I would like to challenge of, of you guys. I would like to challenge you guys to do this is to start taking back your morning. So for many people, the first thing we do in the morning is we get out of bed and then we head out, head out and check our email or we check our social media feeds or you know, turn on the news or something like that. And I would encourage you strongly to move away from that. And instead, the first thing you do when you get out of bed in the morning is to take action towards better health. So that could mean um, different things for different people. And I think it's really important to establish a routine or establish a practice or a ritual in the morning that you do no matter what, no matter where you are, if you're at home or if you're on the road or if you're staying in friend's house or whatever, but it's to have this routine or ritual. And it doesn't have to be the same as your neighbors. It doesn't have to be the same as mine, but it should include things that are good for you, including moving your body. This doesn't mean that you have to go out for a 10 K run. It doesn't mean that you have to hit the gym for an hour long, you know, workout. It can be as simple as saying, First thing in the morning, when I get out of bed, I'm going to throw my shoes on, put my jacket on, put the dog on the leash and go for a 10 minute or even a five minute walk. Breathe in deeply, take some big deep breaths, get some fresh air, move your body and start to focus your intentions for the day. So I gave you kind of three little uh, things I would like you to start doing. So whether it's taking a walk, which I highly recommend, or 
taking a moment and sitting in meditation, if that's something that resonates with you, it may or may not be, everyone is different. But I would like you to start doing these three things. And we did, as I said, talk about this in the 30 day wellness challenge, but we're gonna talk about it again. So I want you to first think of things that you are grateful for in your life. And I hope you guys have your journals out and are taking notes and or are willing to go back and listen to this again, which if it's choppy, I know that's super annoying. So I recommend that you take some notes. So first I want you to think about first thing in the morning, you're gonna hop out of bed and either go for a walk or start a meditation practice. And it only takes a few minutes. It doesn't need to take an hour of your day. It only, you need, you know, 10 minutes is plenty. So you're going out, you're going for a walk, and you're gonna think about the things you're grateful for. Think of three things that you're grateful for. It can be things, it can be people, it can be experiences, it can be anything at all that brings you joy. I also want you to use this time and think about what your intention is for the day. And this can relate to your health goal. Of course, that's what we're talking about today. Or it can relate to your other goals. Like you made a big list, right? There should be at least 10 things on that list. So you can start just sort of thinking through that list and setting your intention for the day. Like what is your aim? Why, you know, reiterate your why, go over your priorities, do, do those things and get those top of mind. And then you're also going to think about the top three to five things that you must do today in order to move yourself forward towards your goals. And that's what I want you to start thinking about as far as a morning ritual. As I said, I'm not going to give you guys step by step, this is what I want you to do, a, B, C, and D, because it's going to look different for everybody, but your number one first part of your homework, and I have more homework for you at the end, of course, for the week, but step one is really to create a morning ritual. I want you to create it, and I want you to, to commit to it, and I want you to write it down, and to take that a step further, I want you to post it in our Facebook group and let everybody else know what you are committing to doing first thing in the morning, starting tomorrow morning, and I will do the same. Um, this is hugely important in that Facebook group. I know we're only a week in and it hasn't been super, super active, but I have noticed how supportive everyone is of everyone else, which is so awesome. But I really want to use that as a source of accountability. So that's sort of your first accountability homework is to establish a morning ritual, make the commitment, and then tell us all what it is, how long you're going to commit. Is it 10 minutes? And what exactly is going to happen during those 10 minutes? Your morning ritual might very well be get out of bed, drink, you know, two cups of water, and then go to the gym for your workout. Your morning ritual might be to get out of bed and do a yoga DVD or, or a yoga class or something like that. It might be to your morning ritual might be to get out of bed, take the dog for a quick walk, and then sit down to breakfast with your family all together every day, like no exceptions. There's a lot of different ways this can look, but the point is to set your day on a great note with intention and focus and your priorities top of mind and your goals top of mind, rather than starting your day um, with email or you know, starting your to-do list of you know, work your work agenda or, you know, turning on the news and, and starting it that way, or even browsing social media and starting with all the nonsense that kind of comes with when you jump on Facebook first thing in the morning and check what's gone on, check everybody else's schedules before you check your own. And we are all guilty of this, myself included, super guilty. So I'm going to do the same. I'm going to come up with my new morning ritual and I will post it for you guys to see. And I would love for you all to do the same in that Facebook group. So so let's move on to the wellness guide. And this will be available for you guys to download in the members area very shortly. And these are the habits that I personally feel are so important to living a really full, vibrant, healthy life. And you will notice this is not a step-by-step, -step, I think you should be paleo or I think you should be vegan or I think you should do this type of workout or that type of workout and you need to exercise for two hours a day. It's not going to be that kind of thing because I truly believe that if you follow these few habits, I think there's only four of them in here, and you find the fitness and, and eating plan that works for you, then you'll be successful. Sorry, water break. So that's what we're going to talk about. And they, the, the, some of them are very obvious, including the first one, which is water. How many of us 
set this intention all the time and we do well for a while and then we forget about it but it is so 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 important so the very first thing we're going to talk about doing and start doing immediately if we're not already is drinking enough water um and that has nothing to do with anything other than getting it done so it's not about i don't like water or i get too busy like we all have loads of excuses why we don't drink it um, but none of them are good. None of them are good excuses. We all need to do it. So we're all going to start immediately. Olivia saying my morning ritual is diaper changes. Yeah, that makes sense. But you can even you could totally come up. I mean, I don't have I don't have kids yet. But I know lots of moms. I mean, most of the people in my life are moms of young children at this at this age. And you can totally come up with a morning ritual that ha that involves your kids. Um, Olivia, I already know from working with you over the last few weeks that you are super resourceful and you have some great ideas for um, making your wellness a priority. So I'm, I'd be really excited to see what kind of ritual you come up with that involves your kids um, or that involves your family, that kind of thing. So super pumped to see what you come up with in that department. So type in the chat, guys, let me know if you drink enough water. Yes or no? Do you think you drink enough water every single day? I would type in the chat. No, I don't. I'm going to type it in. Nope. Because I fail at that a lot. So here's what you're going to do. Starting right now, we're trying to drink half of our body weight in pounds in ounces of water. So if you weigh 160 pounds, that means your goal is to drink about 80 ounces of water. Um, oh, some of you do. Awesome. Oh, that's great. That makes a huge difference. Most days, Olivia says, yes, Kelly says, Kelly's with me and says, nope. Um, so half your weight in pounds in ounces of water. I know that sounds complicated, but really it's not. Cindy's doing three or four liters a day. Awesome. You guys are really doing a great job then. Cool. Maybe this won't be so hard. This will just be hard for me and Kelly and everybody else has already got it in the bag. I'm still going to tell you some of my strategies for getting the water in. And I know a lot of people, um, you guys have a head start because you did the wellness challenge for sure. But I know the eight glasses of water a day thing is something that a lot of people tell, but that doesn't really make sense. I mean, when you think about it, a 200 pound man and a 120 pound woman don't need the same amount of water. So I like this formula better, this half your weight in pounds in ounces of water a day. My favorite strategy definitely is trying to drink up to one liter first thing in the morning, which sounds like a lot, but it really does make a huge difference. I mean, we, we dehydrate all night long as we're sleeping. Uh, I'm super dehydrated right now, as you can tell. Start your morning before you have coffee, before you do anything else, just getting it in and drinking that water, it really makes a huge difference in your energy. It makes a huge difference in your digestive system. And it really kind of kickstarts your body's thirst, actually. It will make you more thirsty during the rest of the day if you start by rehydrating, which of course makes it easier to drink that water later in the day. And if you drink one liter first thing, then you're already, you know, one third of the way there. So it's a, it's a nice head start. It's really easy to let the day get out of control. And then you forget Olivia saying, I still have my hourly water alarm going. That's awesome. That's another strategy that I like to use all the time is I set alarms on my phone for everything. And I recommend you do the same thing. If you have a, tr if you have a hard time remembering to do these things. So an alarm in your phone is always a great idea. Uh, the other thing I love doing is to spice up my water. Lemon is the most obvious one, but the other, there's some other things. You can add tons of herbs and spices to your water. Ginger is wonderful as well. Lime is great. Some people like cucumbers sliced up in their water. There's many, many things you can do. Mint leaves are great. Actually, basil is really yummy in water. There's tons of ideas that you can use. So I think that's going to be a pretty easy one for you guys, which is great according to the chat. So we will move on to the next one. And that, this is hard to see, I realize, but that is to focus on dark leafy greens. And this doesn't just have to be, I did say leafy greens, but it doesn't just have to be uh, lettuce. This can be any dark colored vegetable. So broccoli, Brussels sprouts, asparagus, uh, peppers, all colors of peppers, tomatoes, you know what I mean when I say dark leafy greens, because I mean, I just mean um, 
dark colored vegetables. And our new goal, if you're not doing this already, is 10 servings a day. And I know these, I'm sure you're thinking, I can hear you thinking, oh my gosh, she's not telling us anything we don't know. And that's 100% true. I'm not telling you anything you haven't heard before. But as we talked about a million times prior, often the things that we, the habits that get us to where we want to be, we just don't do them. Like Brennan Burchard always says, it's making common, common sense, common practice. So we know that we need to do these things, but we're just not doing it. So the reason I want you guys to focus on these four things, drinking water, the dark leafy greens, and the next two I'm going to tell you is really because if you do this on a consistent daily basis, first of all, it's huge for your health. It's full of vitamins and nutrients, and it gives you lots of things that you need. But second of all, it starts to push out maybe some less healthy habits. So if you're focusing your day on achieving these goals, these nutritional goals, drinking water, eating lots of greens, um, eating lean proteins, getting lots of these sources of fats and things like that, it becomes difficult to eat horrible things because you're too busy working on eating all the great things. And this is a strategy I've really started to implement with lots of clients over the last year or so. And it has worked very, very well. None of us like to be told we can't have something. So if you put your focus on making sure you do have certain things, then it becomes much easier to make those good choices. So 10 servings of greens per day. Karen's asking, what does a serving equal? So here's how it goes. Cooked vegetables, a half a cup is a serving. Raw vegetables, especially like leafy greens, one cup is a serving. So for leafy greens, it would be one packed cup would equal one serving. Um, does anybody achieve 10 servings a day? I would love to know. Type that in the chat box for me. I don't. <laughs> Uh, clearly, I'm not doing good in any of these departments at the moment, but I'm certainly going to start because we're in this together. I don't see any comments yet, but I'm going to guess most people do not get, not even close. Yeah, no. Every, <laughs> yeah, I didn't think so. Okay, so we're all on the same page in that one. And this is, this is a funny one because we all know this, right? You've heard this a million times before. I'm not, nobody's going, oh my gosh, I never knew. I never knew I needed so many servings of vegetables. Like we all know we need those. We just don't do it. Uh, I will give you a cheat. Jackie five is more than a lot of people can say. So good on you for that. If you, uh, I'll save that for the next slide. Next slide's kind of a cheat to get your, um, to get your vegetable servings. So just as a recap, healthy habit. Number one is water, drinking lots of water, half your body weight in ounces. Healthy habit number two is to strive for 10 servings of dark vegetables per day. Healthy habit number three is a build on the dark leafy green vegetables per day. And you can use this to achieve that number or you can use this to surpass that number. And I will also tell you a bit of a cheat on how to kind of get more greens into your life. So you, this is not going to be a shock to anybody that I'm putting this up on the board because I'm a huge, huge advocate of green smoothies daily for a few reasons. And I will tell them to you. First of all, it makes it very easy to achieve that 10 servings per day. If you get two, three, four, or five servings in a green smoothie, um, that's the first, first part. The second part is it also makes it easy to add in some super healthy supplements, which we can talk about in just a second. And the third reason I love green smoothies is because the act of blending your greens actually makes them much easier to digest. So um, maybe you guys can relate and maybe you've never experienced this, but I know lots of people, if they just start adding in loads and loads of greens into their day, they have some digestive upset. Like sometimes it takes a little bit of work to get yourself up to 10 servings because your body's not used to handling that amount of fiber, that amount of nutrients, um, and all of the things that goes with that. So blending your greens makes them easier to digest. So I always recommend that if you're going to do green smoothies, because it is a huge influx of nutrition and fiber in a, you know, a small dose, I always recommend blending the heck out of it. So as you know, I'm a huge proponent of commercial grade blenders. 
So I have a blend tech. Vitamix is another good on the market that are fabulous. If you don't have one or if that's not in the budget or not something that is in the foreseeable future, that's okay. And I, there are some tricks to getting around that. So the first part would be to blend, make sure you blend the heck out of your smoothies. Um, and that's a two part of the first part would be to blend your liquid and your greens first before you add any fruit or adding add-ons or superfoods or anything like that. So if you are not, this is super, super important because you really want to break down those cellular membranes in the leafy greens. So if you're not using a commercial grade blender, and you will know if you're using one because they cost a small fortune, um, then you make sure you gr you blend those greens and the liquid first and blend them for longer than you think, like obnoxiously long so that they're nice and broken down and then you can add your fruit. I'm just giving you guys sort of um, a really basic breakdown of how I structure my green smoothies. So it's usually one cup of a base. So that could be coconut water, it could be water, it could be coconut milk, almond milk, uh, that's usually what I go with, kind of those four things. And then one to two cups of leafy greens. I put one cup here just to be gentle on you guys. And then half a cup of fruit. I prefer lower sugar fruits like green apples, like lemons and limes, like berries, but you can use any fruit you like. And if you guys do not have my um, green smoothie guide, let me know. Send me off an email. Actually, maybe I'll post it in the uh, in the Facebook group, and I'll get. I have several guides, but I'll give you one that has a bunch of recipes in it. So, if you just want to let me know if you guys have any of my green smoothie guides or not, that would be great. You can type it in the chat, or you can send it to me later, and I'll send you some. The other kind of cheat you can do if you're using green smoothies, which I would highly recommend, is to invest in a greens powder. There are several great ones on the market. I use a particular brand. You certainly don't have to use my brand, um, but just make sure they're coming from a reliable source. So just make sure they are organic and that there's no crazy additives. You don't want the, you know, aspartame or sweeteners like that in them. You want them to be as natural as possible. But that's also a great way to kind of hit that 10 servings of vegetable of vegetables marks mark each day i'm stumbling over my words tonight i don't know why um the other things i like to do is add things like um chia hemp hearts flax seeds um cinnamon cardamom lots of spices so there's tons of things you can do to spice up your green smoothies and make them delicious if you are just starting out which i don't th i think all of you have tried green smoothies before so this won't be a huge leap then I would recommend starting with a beginner friendly smoothie, which certainly I can send you. So that is healthy habit number three is to include a green smoothie. The other thing you can do when you get more advanced is start adding more vegetables. So you could do one cup of one cup of base, one cup of greens or two cups of greens. And then you can also add another half a cup of celery or broccoli or herbs are nutrients and basil is amazing in green smoothies as is parsley can be harsh but it's super super good for you so those are some more add-ons that you might want to try in your green smoothies um do i have a fourth i don't really this is sort of the fourth healthy habit but of course it's not a food habit this is about creating a non-negotiable fitness plan so now we're moving on from the food part of things. And I'm going to hop back over so I can see the chat and see if you guys have any questions. So before I go into the fitness part, does anybody have any questions on those? On, we just talked really briefly about some nutritional habits that I think every single person on the planet should be adopting and taking very seriously, but that most of us don't do a great job of. So do you have any questions about that? And I know it's not a meal plan and I know perhaps you might have been expecting a meal plan or maybe you weren't, but I do think it's really important to start and figuring out what works best for you. So I think, uh, what's your question about green powder, Jackie? You just said green powder with a question mark. I don't know exactly what you mean. So elaborate and then I'll answer it. If you guys want meal plans, I have loads of them and I'd be happy to send you one. But I think it's really, really important to figure out what works for you. So what I mean by that is 
most of you know I am mostly paleo because that works for me. I'm not saying that everybody should be grain free. I'm just saying grains don't do awesome in my body. So I don't eat them that much. But like that doesn't mean that they're not good for you. It doesn't mean that, you know, you might be vegan and that might work great for you. You might do really well with just sort of a macro balanced diet consisting of you know, normal, quote unquote, normal food, you might, you might be um, pescatarian, like there's loads and loads of different eating styles that work for different people. And I just didn't want to give you one. So people are asking about green powder. Yeah, green powders, like they're green supplements. There's loads on the market, but they're basically, shoot, I wish I could get mine out of the cupboard and read to you what's in them. So it's just a supplement that you buy and they're basically powdered greens and most of them contain sea vegetables like kelp, um, blue green algae, things like that. And they also contain loads and loads of powdered veg like dark leafy green vegetables. Um, yeah, that's the best way I can describe it. You can get them at health food stores. I use an Isogenics one. I like it. I like Isogenics for lots of reasons. Um, I'm not promoting it to you guys, but people ask me what I use. And so I tell them I've used others in the past, but I do think, like I said, it's really important that you get a high quality one that is organic. Organic is super important, especially if you're going to be eating high dose, um, you know, green powder and a green powder would be considered a high dose supplement. So most of those powders, I think it's one teaspoon. It's a really, really small amount is the equivalent nutritional value of like five to 10 servings vegetables or eight to ten servings of vegetables so just starting out with the greens powder it is recommended that you start slow so just do like a quarter of a serving your first time and then half a serving the next day and, and three quarters and so on because your body does need a little bit of time to adjust to that volume of nutrition but it's just a great backup plan like i never i never promote i don't think people should use supplements as their primary source of nutrition. But I do think it's a great, it's like an insurance policy. Like you eat well and you do everything you can do, but just in case you didn't hit the mark, you're also taking some supplements. So, it, it, I mean, it's supplement in itself. That's the word, right? It's for, it's to supplement your diet. It's not to be the primary source of nutrition. So I take supplements. I think they're great, but I do, I don't like it when people start relying on them as an excuse to not eat well throughout the day, or I don't have to eat any vegetables all day because I'm going to take my greens powder. Like that's not what it's about. It's still really important to eat well. That's your first line of defense is to eat very, very well. But supplements do, um, I think, have a place in a healthy diet. So I take a few. If you want to know what they are, I'd be happy to tell you. But greens powder is one of them. I'm, like, I'm not talking about fat burners or anything like that. I'm talking about like fish oil. Um, antioxidants, greens, powders, a great quality multivitamin, things like that. Um, certainly not like stimulants or appetite suppressants or anything like that. That's not what I'm talking about. So I hope you guys see the difference. Does that make sense to everybody? Good. It looks like you got it. So greens, powder, yeah. If you want, I can take a picture of what I use or I'll take a picture of the ingredients maybe and post it so you can kind of get an idea. Many of them are very, very similar. Like if you go looking at the health food stores or, or you know, uh, lots of thing now and there's all there's a number of great um, companies out there that do a greens powder so it's really easy to find you just have to do a little research do your due, due diligence and make sure that you know what you're getting the truth is in the supplement world you really do get what you pay for so if you buy a super cheap supplement it's probably a super cheap supplement uh, do you know what I mean like it's probably not a great quality so that's important to me too like if I'm going to be putting a high dose of something in my body it better be great quality um, that's my talk on that I could obviously ramble on about that for a long, long time but I won't so I'm to anybody super consistent basis any accountability on like life is going to be a part because it's something that you have in the back I would like to know that so kind of and like where you're at with your fitness currently while I drink some more water
I also have maybe a fun idea that I'll tell you guys about a little bit later. So while I wait for you guys to type that in, we'll just start. Again, as a performer, well, still, I'm still a fitness trainer. I still teach some classes and I still do some training. And everybody always wants a plan, like a step-by-step -step plan from me. And that's great. And I have lots of them and I will happily give you one. Um, because I said it would be part of this program, and it absolutely is. I have a bunch to choose from. Cindy's saying, not good. But I also think it's very, very important to find, I always call it your soulmate workout. Like the workout that doesn't feel like a workout. The exercise that you love, that you can't wait to do, that never feels like a chore. Um, something that you don't need to be held, held accountable for. Like you don't want to feel like you're dragging yourself through your workouts every day because that's not sustainable it's like anything else it's like a diet like if you go on a super restrictive diet we've heard this a million times and many of us have done it a million times you go on a super restrictive diet and yet it's effective but you can't maintain that and the same is true for fitness if you jump on some fitness bandwagon and you start punishing yourself in the gym and going through you know getting involved in this crazy regimented fitness program, if that's not something you love, you're not going to sustain it. So this really becomes a much like your food. It, it becomes about finding what you love and what you find fun and what will work for you. So that's what we're going to talk a little bit about. And I'm going to give you guys some options, but let me switch my slide here. We're going to dive into this stuff. Um, so we're going to get right into your homework. First thing I want you to do, we talked last week about setting goals and you were to set a couple that were health and fitness related. So here's the steps. And then I'm going to sort of talk about reverse engineering these goals, um, specifically related to your health. And this will sort of bring that especially about finding the fitness plan that's going to work best for you. And then we'll talk about some options because I have a few for you. Um, so first things first, you need to set the goals and put them in your list. So if you did not set health goals last time when we did our list of 10, then you need to put some in there. Jackie says, body pump, geez. I, I quite enjoy body pump myself. I haven't done it in a really long time. Cindy's saying, I said impossible levels start slow and then increase. Yeah. So first step, set the goals, put them on your list. Make sure they are part of that 10 goal list that you set. So let me know if they were. Like, did you guys set health goals inside that list? You should have set goals in all the areas of your life, but there should definitely have been some health goals. The second part is you need to put a deadline to these. You need to put a deadline to all of your goals, but specifically your health goals and your fitness goals and your nutrition goals. So um, pick a date to get it done by, and then we're going to figure out how to do that. And then also give them measure. So we've talked a lot about setting, you know, big, bold, dream, crazy, cool, exciting goals, which absolutely is step one. But then step two is to sort of break them down into those smart goals that we've talked about before. So they do have to have measure. There has to be a way to know when you've achieved it. And we need to be able to break them down into really small um, pieces to, to execute. So that's what we're going to talk about now. We're going to talk about reverse engineering your health goals. And this, it's so funny because it's common practice in business and finance for people to set goals and then figure out exactly how to break them down and exactly how they work and then make that happen. Sorry, I'm just reading some of your comments here on the goals you set. I'm going to try yoga this week. Awesome, Jackie. Cool. Uh, yeah, that's going to be part of what we talk about is trying new things. Have you done yoga before or will this be a brand new thing for you? Uh, type that in and then I'm, I'm going to keep rambling here. So the same principles we apply to business goals and finance goals. Like if we decide we need to save a certain amount of money for a certain event, like I have a wedding coming up, so that's a great example to use. We know we need to save a certain amount of money. And so then we broke it down and we figured out how many dollars per month we need to save over the next certain and each week what that means to our lifestyle like things that we don't buy because we need to save a certain amount of dollars in order to get the right amount per month to have the right amount for the wedding like we always do this for financial and business goals 
but I think we miss the mark on it when it comes to health goals. We set these big lofty health goals, we throw them out there, and then we don't do anything to create a plan in order to make those happen. So that's where I think people go wrong. So few, few people do this. So one thing I want you to keep in mind, and I've said this before, is that anything you want to accomplish in the next 12 months, because we're talking over the year, but of course they can be much shorter timelines than that. Like Cindy just said, she set a four week goal and that's perfect. Somebody has done this before you. So it is absolutely figure outable. Like there's nothing that's been done before that you can't do. No one is smarter than you. No one's better than you. Like they might have just figured it out and you didn't figure it out yet. They might work a little harder and you just haven't figured that out yet. So if somebody else has done it before, then you can too. And I have some really specific steps here for you. So again, I hope you have your journal out because we're going to have some more fun. So much like last week, we did some brainstorming. Excuse me again for another 10,000th water break. We're going to do some brainstorming again tonight when it comes to your health goals. And I think this stuff is really fun. Um, if anybody else here is a list maker, you're going to like this. So step one in the reverse engineering your health goal process is to be very, very specific. So I'm going to use the goal of losing weight because I know that's on a lot of people's minds here. And it's a really, really common one. But this is also the same um, sort of set of guidelines we're going to use for the other goals in your life that have nothing to do with health, that have to do with, you know, other areas of your life. So for example, if you set a goal of lose weight, gain energy, I'm going to eat less, I'm going to exercise more. Those are so arbitrary and they're so broad. It's like walking into the woods and hoping you stumble onto a trail, but you didn't start on a trail and you don't have any idea where the trail is or what, what direction you should be going, but you're just kind of hoping for it, right? That doesn't make any sense. You need a map. You need to know where the trail is, where the trail goes and where the trail ends. And the same is true for your goal. So what you're going to do, first step in the process is to brainstorm. Put your very specific, very measurable goal at the top of a piece of paper or at the top of one of your journal papers, pages rather, and you're going to brainstorm everything you could possibly need to know, learn, research, organize, change, buy, do, and schedule to make that goal happen. So what you're doing is you're going to make a huge, huge, huge master list of all the little things that need to happen from now until your deadline in order to make that goal a reality. The longer the list, the better, because it gives you more and more to work with. So I did a little bit of um, examples for you. So for example, if your goal is to lose 20 pounds in two months, I'm not saying you have to do that. I'm not saying that should be your goal. I'm just giving you a hypothetical. Your brainstorm might start off looking like this. How much weight do you need to lose? How deficit are you going to need to create? How many calories does your body burn right now? Like you need to figure that out. Based on how many calories your body burns right now, how many should you consume every day? What is a reasonable amount to consume without you know, doing any damage to your system? How much body fat do you have? How will you get your body fat measured? Like research the available methods in your area. Do they have hydrostatic weighing? Are the personal trainers who do like caliper testing? There's lots of different ways you need to figure out what the best ways are and what you have available to you. What should your body fat be? Find an accountability partner, find an accountability group, which is what we have here. You could interview someone else who's done the exact same thing. I love this one. So if you have a goal, and you know somebody else who's achieved that goal, sit down with them and interview them and figure out exactly what they did. You're going to have to research exercise methods. You're going to have to research exercise options in your area. You're, you might want to set two dates per week to try out new workouts until you find the option that you love and that you will stick with. You'll have to look into the cost of a gym. You'll have to look into the cost of equipment. You might have to rearrange your schedule to fit in morning exercise. You might have to buy food storage containers. Take your before photos, take your measurements, schedule, you know, schedule progress photos, organize the pantry, organize the fridge. You get what I'm going with this, right? You're going to write down every single little thing you could possibly think of, including some research things to get you to your goal. So that is step one. It's a massive brain dump and it's a huge, huge, huge list of things that need to get done. And some of them can be very simple, like schedule three workouts per week, 
call my friend and schedule, you know, a walk, start a walking club at work. There's so many things. There's so many little tiny things that could contribute to you reaching your goal. It's just a matter of writing them all down and having them in front of you so that you have something to work with. So once you have that brainstorm all done, then step two is to make it non-negotiable. So this is really what our first slide was about. This is really, and that this is like you're going to make this happen. Coach yourself to success the way you would coach your best friend or the way you would coach your child. Like if your child, this is a great example because everybody's so passionate about their kids, of course, as they should be. So if your kid has a goal of doing something, maybe they, you know, they're, they're on a sports team or they're trying to get into university or they're, you know, any, whatever the goal may be, you encourage them the whole way, right? Like from start to finish, you cheer them on. It's rah, rah, like you can do it. Sometimes it's tough love. Sometimes you have to sit down with them and tell them the honest truth. But you never say, like, I think that's just a really stupid idea. Like, there's no way you're going to ever be able to do that. Like, you're too dumb. You're too dumb to do that. You're not capable of doing that. Like, you're, you're too lazy. You'll never get that done. Like, we don't talk to kids that way. We don't talk to our best friends that way. So why would you talk to yourself that way? The point here is coach yourself the way you would coach someone that you love. And if someone that you love, you know, has a goal that's really, really important to them. And then they come up against an obstacle or a stumbling block, or they have a little setback, you wouldn't say to them, well, I told you that would happen. Like I told you this was a stupid idea. You should just quit. But we say that to ourselves, right? Like, so we're going to stop doing that. The point is to coach yourself the way you would coach someone you love. And maybe you need to set a reminder in your phone that says exactly that sentence because we forget. And it's so easy to hit a roadblock or hit a stumbling block or make a mistake or fall off the wagon for a second and then say something miserable to ourselves and then quit. So this really comes down like wide and it's the simplest of all the steps is to make a decision, make it non-negotiable and adopt this can't fail, won't fail no matter what, I'm going to do it attitude. Um, it also means being really, really clear on your why and your priorities and why this is important to you. Like it needs to grab you, your reason for doing whatever you're doing, whether it's health goals, business goals, life goals, relationship goals, whatever. Your reason for doing whatever you're doing needs to be strong enough to grab you in the moments when you feel your confidence start to waver or when you feel less then motivated. You need something like you need an anchor. You need an anchor that you can always go back to and say, okay, right. Like that's why I'm doing this. And you need contingency plans. Um, I'll give you a kind of an embarrassing example. I use this today. It's not embarrassing. It's a, it's, it's a perfect example actually. So I've been working really hard, as many of you have been. I'm doing this with you. I have my own set of goals that I'm working towards and my own reasons for working towards them. And today I was tired and I was stressed and I had a long day and a, you know, a whole bunch of things came at me and I was just like, oh my God, just, I'm just gonna, like I want whatever. It was some junky thing that I like to eat it's like a comfort food. And I was like, I'm going to go. And I'm driving home from Halifax. This legitimately happened today. I'm driving home from Halifax where I had this like crazy day at work. And I was like, I'm just going to go. I talked myself in and out of stopping at the store probably 10 times, um, on my way home. And then I got home and I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. So I went in to the store that I would have bought whatever I was going to buy, which is not conducive to reaching my goals. And instead I went to the magazine rack and bought wedding magazines because one of my goals of course is my wedding that's coming up. And I thought that's a great contingency plan. Like in a time when you are feeling super, like you're not, you don't even care. Like you're just going to do the thing that even though you know, it's not good, it's not going to help your goals. You need a plan to snap you out of it. And so that was my plan and it worked awesome. So that's just one example. Like it's, you need to, build in those contingency plans, like figure out what your weaknesses are, write them all down, and then come up with a strategy for each one so that you don't sabotage your own goals.
I hope that makes sense. That was a long story to tell you guys, but I hope that makes sense to everybody. And it's different for each one of us. The other thing that you can do, and we've talked about this before also, is to visualize your success. So what will it look like at the end? Like what will that celebration look like? What will the after party look like? This is really, really, really important. That could be a vision board for you. It could be your journal. It could just be a phrase or an affirmation that you look at every day. It can be a lot of things. I like vision board stuff because it's visual. You know, it's right in front of you. And I've talked about this before as well. I personally like to take a picture of my vision board and use it as my screensaver and put it on my phone and just keep it top of mind. Olivia says she can relate. Good. Yeah. And I mean, we, we, no matter how strong your goals are or how strong your whys are, there are always going to be moments where you just don't care. Like in that moment, you just don't care. So you need a backup plan. Like you need to be able to coach yourself out of it because there's not going to be somebody else there to coach you. There's not like you're the one. And the truth is when we're about to make bad decisions about our health or, or our life, not, not even just our bad decisions, we usually do it in the privacy of our own heads. Like we usually don't announce to the world, I'm about to make a really bad decision. Like everybody watch me. We usually kind of hide it. So you need to be able to coach yourself out of doing that. Um, I hope that makes sense to everybody. So step three, so that was step two is to make it non-negotiable, come up with those contingency plans. Step three is to create an environment for success. So this one's really, really simple. This is just about surrounding yourself in an environment that makes it easier to reach your goals and that doesn't tempt you to not reach them. So when we're talking about health goals, it means, you know, the space that you're in, even sometimes they're like, if you have a problem, with, I don't know, like KFC and you drive by KFC <laughs> for my Canadians, everybody knows who that is, who's in Canada. If you drive by KFC on your way to work every day and every day you want to stop at KFC, well, stop going that way. Like there's a lot of really simple things you can do um, in your daily life to change your environment in order to be more conducive towards your goals. And generally our worst habits come from being in an unhealthy environment. So if we can make our environments really, really healthy and really, really conducive to reaching our goals, simple things like cleaning out your pantries and cleaning out your fridge and keeping your you know, your kitchen organized and, and doing all of those things can make a huge difference. Just an, a healthy environment makes your goals much more attainable. So further to that, ask yourself, like look around your space, look around your car, look around your office, look around your home, look around your bedroom, look around everything and, and ask yourself, does, does my environment make my goal more or less attainable? Um, cause it can make a huge, huge difference. And then step four is mapping out the course of action. So we've already created this huge brainstorm list, this huge, huge brain dump of all the to do's that you have in order to reach your goals. And this list will grow. I mean, as you move along, the list will grow. So think of more and more things you need to do, things you need to learn, new skills you need to acquire. Um, you know, it, it can go on and on and on. And actually, if you guys want to post, you guys can totally post all of this stuff in the Facebook group. Like if you want to write out your list and take a picture of it and post it in the group, that would be awesome because that will help other people too. That will totally inspire other people and maybe, um, maybe kind of give them a place to go if people are getting stuck on how to make these lists. It can be really helpful to see what someone else has done. I can do the same. If that will be helpful, I can post mine in the group as well. So step four is mapping out the course. And this is just taking that list and putting it into a to-do list every day. So we're going to talk a lot more down the road about creating a really specifically crafted to-do list and how to maintain that list in order to reach your goals, not just your health goals. We're going to talk about all your other goals. But for today's purposes, we're just going to talk about how to incorporate your health goals onto your to-do list. So we all have these lists, right? I think everybody here probably makes a to-do list. It's on there, like projects you have to get done are on there, but you're also going to put two to three, two to four, we'll say two to four specific tasks that you can do in one day that will get you closer to your goal. And I want you to write this down. I want two of those tasks to be nutritional, 
I want one to be fitness related and I want one to be a knowledge or skill related. So what you're going to do is map out your first 10 days in in detail, in very specific detail. So just as an example, your first day might have all the things you need to get done in the day, like drop your kids off at daycare, like cook a birthday or bake a cake for such and such as party, like pick up a present for the party, do the laundry, like whatever your to-do list looks like, but you're also going to put on it these four things. They will be different, but two of them are going to be nutritional. So it could be throw out all the junk food or give away all the junk food. Um, and it could be organize my kitchen and plan my food prep day. And then you're going to have a fitness task. So it might be as simple as do a 20 minute walk or, you know, call a friend and go to a spin class or go online and find a 10 minute yoga practice to participate in just one little thing that you can do every day. And then, and then you need one knowledge or skill or tool task. So it might be to add those alerts to your phone to, to remind you to drink water. So these can be super, super, super simple and they should be super simple, but they're just daily action steps that you can take to get you closer and closer and closer to your goals. So, does that make sense to everybody? I'm going to come back over to the chat so I can see you guys. I'm going to have another drink of water and I want you to type in the chat box if you have any questions about this week's homework. So this is about mapping out your health goals. You're going to reverse engineer those goals. First write them down, then do a huge brainstorm of all the things that you could possibly, possibly, possibly possibly need to do in order to reach that goal and then start taking them off start putting them on your to-do list and you'll be blown away it seems so simple and it is so simple you'll be blown away if you start doing this every single day and how fast you start reaching your goals um, if you take on those healthy habits and you really focus on those and if you also start crafting these like to-do list and be diligent about them, how quickly you start to reach your goals and how much you can accomplish in the run of a day when it comes to your goals, not just your health goals, but all of your life goals. So now I want to open it up for questions and then I want to talk about one other quick thing. I'm going to turn it back so you can see my face here in a second um, and we'll talk about this one other thing. But first, I'm going to give you guys a minute if you have any questions and I can answer them. Does this make sense to everybody? Does everybody get it? Do you get the idea of reverse engineering your goals? I hope, I hope my kind of analogy of we do it for financial goals and we do it for work goals. We do it for work goals all the time. Like at work, at my work, at my day job. We do like work back calendars full time. Like the, like here's the big project and then we work backwards and these are all the things we need to do leading up to the project in order to be successful. But we don't do it for our health goals, which is crazy because it's the same thing. Everybody's got it. You love the idea. Good. I'm so glad. Okay. I'm going to switch it back to my face. You can still type in questions. I'll still be able to see them. You're going to see my picture for a second and then you're going to see my face. Hi, I'm back. Okay, so I promised you guys that I would give you access to my fitness programs. So I have way too many, way too many to count that I've done. I know some people love a regimented fitness program and I also have meal plans. So I said I would give you the option to choose any one of my programs so that you could have something to work towards. And that is absolutely an option. I made a list. Can't really see it. You can't, you can't see it at all, but I did make a list of some of the ones that I think are most valuable. Um, and I will certainly give you this list, but I'm not going to say it on here. I'm going to post it in our Facebook group and I'll sort of give you guys like a little description of each one. But I was thinking, I want your opinion. Do you think it would be better for everybody to just pick whatever program they want and go off and do it? Or do you think it would be good to sort of commit to doing one of these programs together as a group? And I will say most of them are pretty similar. So some of them are body weight only. Some of them do require weights. Um, the 21 day detox is on there. The happy, healthy challenge is on there. 30 day butt lift is on there. 
you know, I have a fit fuel, like a carb cycling program that I've done that's available as well. Uh, so I'm really kind of looking for your guys's opinion. If you guys would like, we could totally pick one as a group and do it together, sort of tackle it together. If you to everybody kind of do their own thing. Cool. Totally cool. I'm down, but I just thought it might be kind of fun if we all sort of tackle one together. There are a few challenges that I've done in the past that are really simple and easy. You know, they take 15 minutes a day sort of idea. And those definitely have been the most effective for people. Um, yeah, so that's what I think I'm going to do. I can't remember where the closed Facebook group is. Cynthia, I don't know. Here's the thing with the Facebook group. Most of you got added because we're Facebook friends, but with a private Facebook group, I can't add you unless we're Facebook friends. So if we are not, you need to add me as a friend and then say, and I will add you to the group. And then I would definitely turn on the notifications for that group. And you can also add groups to your favorites. Uh, which makes, which means they show up in your sidebar, like on the left hand side of your Facebook screen, your favorite groups will show up there so that they're easy to find. And then if you don't want to be my Facebook friend after you're added to the group in me, well, but I can't add you unless we are friends. So it's a funny Facebook, I think it's a bit of a glitch myself for Facebook to do that, especially with so many businesses using the platform. But that's just the way it is. So if you're not in the Facebook group yet, add me as a friend and I'll put you in the group and then you can unfriend me or we can stay friends, whatever you want to do. People are saying as a group, we're getting some feedback here. Okay. So what I'll do, I will put all of these programs, I'll pick 10 so that it's even 10 is a bit overwhelming, I think, but I'll pick some and I'll put them in the Facebook group with a little description of each one. And then we can sort of vote or you can decide, like maybe a few of us decide we're going to do one together and, the, and then other people don't want to do that. Or maybe you're totally awesome with the current fitness plan you have. Um, and you want to stay doing that. That's fine. Like this was just an added bonus. This was just an option for people because I know, and myself included, like I like a regimented fitness plan and I, I love working out. So this is easy for me. I really need to have it written down and sort of tick off the boxes each day that I did my workout and I accomplished it and whatever. So, so I think that'll be good. So I will do that tomorrow. Um, I'll post that in the Facebook group tomorrow. I'm just trying to think of my schedule tomorrow. My week is nutty. Is anybody else having a super crazy week? Cindy is saying we need to meet up this week. Oh yeah, Cindy, we'll work it out. No, I'm not worried. I'm not worried about it. I'll, I'll get you. I'll get you soon. Um, that's it. What are we at? We're an hour and five minutes. I'm trying really hard to keep these about an hour because I know 90 minutes is kind of crazy long. Do you guys have any questions with, with, well, with anything with regards to the topic today or with regards to any other topic? Is there anything else? I also want to do a little check-in and see if there's anything you guys need from me in order to be more successful. Like, can I show up for you in a better way? I would, I want to know, like, if there's something I can do better for you, I absolutely want to know. And I will absolutely change my approach. Um, I already know that this feed is super annoying because it freezes and does really stupid things. Um, there's nothing I can do about that at this point. There is a PDF, Karen. I don't have it up yet, but again, that will be up tomorrow as well. I wanted to, um, go over a few things with you guys before I put it up and make sure you had the back, my kind of backstory on that, because as you now see, it's not a specific plan. Like I want the, I think those couple of health habits, water, vegetables, and green smoothies and finding a fitness plan that works for you are a that's the way to success. Like that is absolutely the way and, and reverse engineering your goal, which is of course going to look completely different, but yes, there is a PDF and it will be available uh, tomorrow for everybody in the members area. And I'll send you an email uh, as well once that's up so that everybody has that. Any other questions? Do we need to talk about anything? Is there anybody having huge success? How are you feeling about the program so far? What's working for you? What's not working for you? Um, I'll cut a lot of the replay, of course, because nobody wants to hear me ramble and list, answer questions. But um, since I have you, you might as well ask away.
I'm so thirsty. What does that mean? <laughs> I don't know why. I know there's a bit of a delay, so I'm just waiting awkwardly for a second to see if there's any more questions. And if there's not, super duper. I'm going to wait one more minute. No? <laughs> Good. Does that mean everybody's doing awesome? I actually think you guys are doing awesome. I love seeing, um, just wondering what your thoughts are on taking protein powder daily. Okay, Connie. Yep, I will answer this question. So Connie is asking about taking protein powder daily. How many grams of protein would I recommend for women? So, and then Karen... I see your question, I'll get to it. So my protein powder. So if you are using a really great quality protein powder, then I don't think there's anything wrong with taking it every day. If you have a protein powder that's full of artificial ingredients, artificial sweeteners, preservatives, coloring, all of that stuff, then personally, I probably wouldn't take it every day. But I... I take protein powder every day. Um, I have found one that works really well for me. There are certainly others. There's lots of great ones out there. There's things that are important to me that might not be important to other people. Um, but yes, the, the short answer is yes. As far as how much protein for a woman, it completely depends on your goals. So sort of for health, um, the recommended amount of protein is between 0.5 and 1 grams per pound of lean body, which is a bit tricky to figure out. So, um, so in order to figure out your lean body mass, of course, you, you need to know your weight and you also need to know your body fat percentage, which is a little bit trickier to find out. You need to go have it tested somewhere in order to get your lean body mass. Um, and then you take your body fat percentage away from your weight and then you're left with lean mass. And that's how you figure that out. But as a general rule of thumb, I think personally for fitness and for health, especially for, um, now, I was going to say, like, especially in an aging population, but that's not even true. Like, even younger people, it's important to get enough protein. I would aim for, it's so hard to say. It's so hard to say because it depends on your goal. So if you want to build muscle, I would aim for about 0.8 grams per pound, like 0.7 or 0.8 grams per pound of body weight. But that totally depends, right? Like, if you have 50 pounds extra on your frame, well, you don't need a gram of protein for all those 50. So maybe a good way to do it would be just as a general guideline. It's such a hard, it's, I know you weren't expecting this long answer. It's hard because it depends on your, on your goals. But like if, if you're, if my lean mass was 130 pounds, which it probably is like, it's probably close to that. Like if I didn't have any extra body fat, It'd probably be 130 or 135 pounds. So then that would be my protein goal. Like I would be trying to get like 130 grams of protein. Does that make sense? Uh, it's very, that's a very complicated answer and it absolutely depends on your goals. It depends on your body fat. It depends on loads and loads of things. And it also depends on like, like protein isn't just animal sources, right? Like there's protein in leafy greens, there's protein in grains, there's protein in everything. So I'm not talking about eating 10 steaks a day or anything like that. Um, and it does get complicated. But if you want to talk more about this, we certainly can talk one-on-one. -on -one, um, and I can give you some kind of better guidelines based on your goals. So the next question was, Karen is saying, um, don't know if my body can handle 10 servings of greens. Yeah, I would work up to it. If you're not, if you're not eating that much now, I would totally work up to it. Like start slowly because it does take some time like it's a lot of fiber which is great we should be eating a lot of fiber but most of us aren't like the recommended 
and, uh, and the recommendation, like Canada's food guide recommendations are way lower than personally than I think we should be. And they recommend like 25 grams of fiber. So if we're like, most of us don't get that. So if you just all of a sudden bombard yourself, if you're used to getting 15 grams of fiber and then you get 40, like you're going to have some troubles. Um, so yeah, I would work my way up to it. Your body can absolutely handle it, but it might not be able to handle it all at once. So just be gradual, like make a plan, reverse engineer the plan to get 10 servings of greens by the end of the month. By the end of the month, my goal is to get 10 servings of greens a day. And this is how I'm going to do it. Starting this week. They're a great way, like I said earlier, they, first of all, it breaks down the cell membrane and makes it much easier to digest. And second of all, it's just, it's easy to drink a whole bunch of greens. Olivia, I sent you an email earlier, but it was long. Uh, Olivia, sorry, I, I was in a crazy training all day and I did not get a chance to get to my emails, but I will go looking for it. Cindy, loving this and finding it's helping good. What is one serving of greens? Cynthia, so do you mean vegetables, like whole vegetables, or do you mean like supplements? Whole vegetables, if you are having cooked um, or, yeah, if you're having cooked vegetables, it's half a cup would be one serving. If you're having raw vegetable, like cucumber, celery, whatever, it would be like one cup would be the equivalent of one serving. And if we're talking about greens, it would be like, two loose cups or like one packed cup. Does that make sense? And if you're talking about a greens powder, it it varies. It depends on the brand. It's usually like a teaspoon. Sometimes a table, a tablespoon would be like a lot. Okay. I think I got everybody's questions. I know my answers are sometimes <laughs> longer than you guys expect, but I'm going to call it there. Now we're almost at, uh, we're at the 75 minute mark. So if you guys have any more questions, of course, let me know. I do want you to post in that Facebook group. Um, what did I ask you to post? I asked you to post something earlier and I can't remember what it was, but it's back in this feed. Um, and like I said, use that as an accountability tool, like put your stuff in there, put your brainstorms in there, put your goals in there. Like we're all there to support each other. Whole greens. Yeah. So I just said that answer. Um, use that group to gain accountability and also use it as a sounding board. Like if you need some suggestions or if you need, it's a great place to develop those strategies. Like I said, if you make your list of what you know, your excuses will be like what you know your obstacles are in the run of a day and what you know you'll come up against. And when you know you start to waver, write those all down and then use the group to come up with how you're going to combat those situations. Thanks, Olivia. Yeah, I want you to post your morning ritual in that group so we can all see. I'm particularly excited to see Olivia's because she's got two small boys running around. So I can't wait to see what she comes up with. Yeah, I think it'll be awesome to post that. I'll do the same. So I'm going to call it there, guys. I'm going to shut us off. Hopefully that, I think that feed went a little bit better. Um, I'll watch the replay certainly, but it looks like everybody can still see and hear me, which is great. Um, it's unfortunate for Brent because I'm taking up our whole apartment right now. But Cynthia, yes, I saw it. I'm going to friend you back and then I'll add you to the group. I'll do that tonight before I go to bed. Have an amazing night, guys. Thanks so much for showing up in such a great, authentic way every single week. I'm super proud of you guys and the work you've done so far. And we're not even halfway. So I can't wait to keep going. I cannot wait for you guys to reverse engineer your goals. And I will chat with you very, very soon.